All right, there's some people in the back that had questions. We'll keep jabbering. All right, I got a friend here. I don't forget her name that left the room. She talked about things that happened in the past, and I remember these things, such as the hiring of the airport manager and things like this. First of all, let me tell you, thank you all, you all for running and being here, and I would hope that the whole council changes, but here's my point. I've seen things like this done, like she mentioned, the airport manager. They didn't look into that. Uh, even this new city logo, find out it was one that came out of Dubai, uh, United Arab Emirates, or somewhere over there. Uh, and if they would have went back far enough, they would have saw that Wallace Bajali has <coughs> done the same thing in other cities, uh, starting developments and running them up. What I'd like to ask all of you all, and I hope, and here again, I hope the whole council changes, but if, say, only one of y'all get elected, be it mayor or commission, would y'all be willing to, instead of being the yes man, and I'm not going to mention names because I'm not a gossip, there's <coughs> lady on the council that uh, one lady here run against, but I'm not mentioning names, who so seems to just rubber stamp everything. Are y'all willing to say no and make us, you know, make it known that I'm not for this, even if it involves, you know, a lot of media, but. I think um, the past commissioners, this one here, they do things, they don't research it, they just do it, and three years later, after millions have been spent, we found out, well, they did the same thing in Fort Worth, they did the same thing in Waco. This guy, you know, he was a, a bad guy in Florida, and, you know, we're taking him in here. Is anybody willing to just put their foot down? stop on the table and say no. Well, one of the biggest problems that we were discussing earlier is the 5-0 votes. Everybody's on the same page. And if you guys ever attend council meetings, you'll notice that um, everything, they don't really talk about anything. Everything's already just kind of predetermined, it seems like. There's never really any in-depth discussion about the items on the agenda. I know that there are um, the non-consent items and then consent items but you really hear minimal discussion about any of these things. So how do they know how they're going to vote on them? How do they know what project is being presented? How exactly the money's being spent that they're voting yes to and so forth? So if, if I'm elected, I'm still going to be the same voice that I am here and have the same views and the same, the same opinions <coughs> all together. It doesn't matter how many threats I get or whatever the situation is, I'm still gonna be me and I'm still going to vote the way I want to vote. Regardless, even if I get in there with all the rest of the incumbents, Emerald Matters and their group is not going to scare me into anything. I'm going to be who I am and use my position to do what it's intended to do. The thing I don't understand is, you mentioned Wallace Bajali. They were getting sued in all these places. You, it was a Google <laughs> search. You don't have to be Nostradamus to figure well, out. Did they not check this? Yeah. Okay, if well, they don't shop for ballparks when they're when they're buying a ballpark, what makes you think they're going to shop for the, the contracts? <laughs> well, I, I think I can confidently, really quickly confidently say everyone at this table, I can, even though there may be things we disagree on, I can, I can confidently say I don't think anyone sitting here is a yes person because those yes decisions are affecting us. Yeah. So we don't have a reason to say yes to those things to conform because the reason we are all running is because those decisions are affecting us. We have no reason to go along with that. Right. Well, it's really important to have that, that diversity <laughs> on the council. So that you guys I will say yes every time I'm here. I, I for one am looking at uh, Thomas had his hand up. In 2016, so when uh, Brian Eats was leaving and he was resigning off of the city council, I actually put my name in at the request of my son for that uh, consideration for that appointment. As a bunch of y'all may remember. <coughs> and they had a meeting. All of us. They they had all of the uh, all of the people that were going to be considered for that position. They brought us up into the boardroom with then interim city manager Terry Childers. And so all of these people that were were considered, we were all sitting around this big board table. And, and so Terry stood there and he started laying out everything and how the city works. And it's. This was about a two and a half, three hour meeting. And as I watched, every one of these people in that room drank the Kool-Aid. And 
what they they did, <coughs> all of us, well, I say all of us, I, I know not all of us did, but a bunch of us that went in there went in as actual citizens. And at the end of things, at the end of that meeting, a bunch of people went out there being, I hate to say it, programmed. <coughs> for, right. for um, being transferred from a citizen to this is our job and we're the ones that make the policy and everything like that. And um, two of those people are on the city council right now. And I actually watched one of those people drink the Kool-Aid and, and that individual, you know, is, is one, of, one of your city council people and they, they transferred from being a citizen advocate to the place where now we're part of we're part of the managers of this community, and that's that's a powerful thing to actually understand what you can or cannot do, or you will or will not do. You put in a situation like that where they try and indoctrinate you in, and I just wasn't having it. And um, part of the reason I was not I made the top five, but part of the reason I was not chosen for that position is because I made it clear that I didn't do it, and I'm just I have nothing to gain from anything. It's, it's, so many of these people up here don't either. And uh, I'm not going to have somebody push me around and tell me what I need to do. You know, I, I know that I'm a citizen first, and I know that what this community um, needs from the standpoint of I can go to somebody in the community and they can tell me what they need. But I'm not going to have somebody that, that has their vested interests at heart come and tell me what they need and actually feel like the that it's the right thing for me to go ahead and perpetuate their income. I'm just not that guy. So if you're looking for a yes man, I'm not it. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, if you don't know, I'm looking at up to three years, although I have the world's you're best not. counselors. <laughs> I got three class C misdemeanors. So uh, the chance to me folding like a stop taco are, are pretty thin. Uh, I'm from, I, I think we both think we're both both the both anti-ginger candidates, but uh, if I get on and no one else does, I expect council members to quit. That's all I got. <laughs> Kim, is facing, Kim is facing multiple capital uh, camping cases. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Buy after nine, yeah. It was stealing electricity from my sleep apnea machine, clapping during a meeting, Go and on, blocking on. a passageway. Working on it. <laughs> uh, Trevor? Okay, first of all, I want to say I love that you use the rubber stamp analogy because that's what I've been saying. Is they just rubber stamp everything. They just, they just go along and get along. And, and what I want to say about myself is that my dad served in World War II and he was very old-fashioned and he instilled in me a strong work ethic and a strong sense of integrity. And, and the fact that I want to run and make this city better is not going to change. They're not, I, I'm not out for money. They're not going to be able to say, hey, we'll, we'll make you wealthy if you do this. It's not going to be that because that's not what I'm doing this for. I'm doing this for, to make my community better. You know, I want this to be a place that maybe, hopefully, my daughter will bring my grandchildren back here and I spend time with my grandchildren and retire here. You know, so I, I do have a little bit of a selfie reason for it, but it's not money. <coughs> it's not, it's not to gain any kind of notoriety. It's not for anything else but to make this community better. And I, I'm a pretty stubborn woman, and when, so when I feel like someone's trying to convince me to do something that I'm doing wrong, I get kind of a stubborn and I get kind of angry about it. So it's, it's, it's not like I'm going to, like you said, I'm not, a, I'm not a yes man. Well, I'm not a man, but I mean, you know, I'm not a yes man. <laughs> and so that's not something that I do, and when I see people that do that, it makes me angry. Because that's just not, not okay. It's just not the way the kind of person anybody should be. All right. But it sounds like nobody's going to vote against their integrity or compromise their core values, what I heard. That's what I heard, too. All right.